perspective. All right, everybody, and welcome to a, another Monday morning OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, as we like to do on Mondays is talk about upstream projects and how they interact with things like OpenShift. Um, and today I'm really pleased to have Hugo Guerrero with me um, from Red Hat, and he is going to walk us through tuning Kafka to speak with almost everything. I like that one title and um, talk about the, cam the camel connector for Apache Kafka. And I'm going to let Hugo introduce himself and do his demos. Please ask questions in the chat and we will relay to, to him and save some time at the end for live Q&A. All right, take it away, Hugo. Awesome. Thank you very much for uh, for hosting me. I'm really excited to be able to share with you uh, how have we been working with these two uh, uh, amazing Apache projects to be able to get a, a better ecosystem. So uh, a little bit of, uh, about me for the people to, uh, who know, uh, who doesn't know me. It's um, it's Hugo. It's um, I'm a Mexican currently based in uh, Westford in, in the Massachusetts uh, area in the U.S. And I'm a specialist in uh, in APIs and even driven architectures from Red Hat. I'm currently working as a developer advocate for uh, Red Hat integration. And today we're going to spend the next uh, couple of minutes talking about um, three, four, twelve specific topics. First, we're going to be doing a quick recap on, on what it's uh, Apache Kafka, what are the challenges, and a little bit on on the way to do integration using uh, using Apache Kafka. And then we're going to be shifting into uh, Apache Camel. So we will be talking about uh, Apache Kafka, and we're going to be talking about uh, Camel, and we're going to be talking about the uh, Camel sub-projects that allows us to extend the Kafka ecosystem to other systems. So we will be talking about the uh, Kafka connector the, uh, and the new Camelets that are coming as part of Camel Cave. So let's do a quick recap on what it's Apache Kafka and, and why it's so important. So Apache Kafka is a project that was created by LinkedIn around 2010, and it was mainly focused to uh, to be tracking the website activity uh, within the LinkedIn portal, you know, all the clicks, who you are checking, what the jobs they're looking for, and, and, and so on. But they uh, they noticed that their uh, messaging system were not um, uh, handling enough the transactions that they were having in the site. So they decide to refactor and rethink uh, out, outside the box the way to handle events that are happening in, in, in a web system. So that's how they created um, Apache Kafka. And this is uh, this is, has been now many, many uses now. It's been uh, mainly focused as a published subscribe messaging system, um, but also it's also a data streaming platform because now has outgrown with some APIs. But in the core, it is a distributed commit log. So it's a very well tuned broker that delegates most of the uh, of the intelligence or the uh, activities into the producer and consumer clients, and it specializes only in receiving events and then uh, persisting those events. However, it now has outgrown from the Apache project, and there's um, different components around that that has created a, a broader ecosystem. So we do have um, components for doing replication like Mirror Maker. We have the Kafka Connect, we will be talking about that. We have the APIs and, and also third-party toolings like HTTP bridges and, and so on. And, and the thing uh, important here, Apache Kafka, is that Apache by itself, it's not the goal. So you are not alone. So it's not just Kafka by itself. You won't really get any benefit by just having Kafka and, and being able to deploy. You need to go beyond that. So you cannot be just a one single Jedi try to fight and, and, and defeat the galaxy. You need some help for, for, for that. So let's talk about what, how can we uh, get a, a little bit of help as, as, as a Jedi. So the first thing that I was uh, mentioning, it's about Ka uh, Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect was this first attempt from, from the Apache community to be able to increase the scope and being able to simplify the way to um, connect to Apache Kafka and then bring data from uh, data and events and, and, and messages from other systems and also being able to uh, take those uh, messages away. So it basically start to uh, wrap around the producer and consumer APIs because that's that was the original way to connect to Kafka. You need to create your own application, code it by yourself, 
and being able to handle all these uh, all these uh, uh, different things like offsets, like uh, the way to commit and, and, and so on. So the idea was to create this uh, framework that can be reused to easily uh, manage the most uh, you know traditional type of approach of, of Kafka integration, like data conversion, having some some connectors to be able to plug into other systems, and it they define a very well um, uh, very well structured API that defines when you do have a sync, so a place where you are dumping data, and a source where you are taking that uh, you are connecting to to that faucet and being able to um, to get your events. And the problem with this was uh, that, yeah, they have the framework, you have the APIs and so on, but you didn't have um, people actually coding. And even within the uh, Kafka ecosystem and, and the Apache project, there was only just the file sync and the file source, like the uh, reference of, of the connector. So people had to start to deploy and, and develop their own uh, their own plugins, their own connectors to be able to uh, use this, uh, this service. And then, um, when you are already deployed, you are able to get all the benefits from the uh, from this framework and being able to run as a standalone service. Or the benefit is that you can also create a Kafka Connect cluster that it's able to manage then the life cycle of those connectors. So you are able to handle the information and you're able to add some uh, integration pieces, like for example, the single message transformations that allows you to do some you know, uh, messaging handling, like doing some changes in your in your formats, or you know, handling uh, you know, some of your fields. So that's a, that's a very good uh, use case. And this is mainly because Kafka Connect, and if you remember Apache Kafka, it was created in the 2010, and uh, it was mainly focused and heavily on 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 virtual machines and and, and servers and bare metal and, and so on. So. Let's check how can we uh, move then into a Kubernetes space for that. So remember, you're a Jedi, you're not alone. You need to talk to other Jedi, so you're now able to get into the galaxy, uh, gather some friends, and you suddenly realize that you are able to, 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 uh, to gather a, a team, but they are from different species. You need to talk different languages. So that's where, where, where it comes, the, uh, the title of, of, of this session, right? So how can we tune Kafka to, to to be able to speak this language. So if you remember this, this movie, Star Wars, there's one way there, or everybody can use to communicate with others. And that's through, you know, a specialized device, like for example, 3PO, that helps you to be fluent in over 6 million forms of communication. So that's why you're able to then communicate with whatever you, you, you require. So this is what, uh, for example, Apache Camille will, Camille will become. This adaptive that helps us to speak with all the different uh, systems, uh, either as a sync or as a source to our Apache Kafka cluster. So let's get a little bit deeper on um, what it's uh, Apache Camel. So Apache Camel is this project that has been uh, developed since the beginning to implement enterprise integration patterns. So it has also uh, several years uh, as part of the Apache Foundation. And it has grown uh, over the years to now be um, considered the Swiss knife framework for integration because it has a really good amount of components that allows you to do uh, integrations to systems. They have more than 350 different connectors for different systems that go from Slack to Telegram to, um, to Twitter to AWS services and, and so on. And it also allows you to handle some different types of data formats and, and protocols like JSON, Abro, if you want to serialize, um, allows you to handle WebSockets, HTTP, and so on. So that's why it's, it's almost everything. If you have imagine that you need to do an integration with the one system, it, it, it certainly uh, has been addressed by, by, by Camel, or if not, it's, it's, it's under works, because that's something that anyone who's doing integration has been uh, has been faced in, in the past. So most of them are, are coming to the Apache Camel. And it's a, it's an open source uh, project that allows you to also be able to contribute to those uh, to those connectors. So it's it, it's a growing ecosystem all, all the time. And you have the connector, you have the, the formats, the protocols, you can then implement enterprise integration patterns. So for for the uh, for the regular framework, you can do complex things like um, content enrichment, 
splitter aggregators and and so on it's it's a very very active project and, and community that's one of the most committed projects in, in the Apache Foundation. So it's a, it's a very, uh, very live project. And it, it basically takes these connectors and, and, and now um, Camel is it's able to run on, on different uh, environments. So you can run on, on a traditional VM and it has now uh, an integration with, uh, with Kubernetes, OpenShift of course, and now more recently with, with Knative for doing this kind of serverless integration. And the idea is to have these pipelines or, or flows or routes, as, as, as we call them in, in, in Apache Camel, that allows us to do from one place to a uh, different uh, destination. So, for example, from a Kafka topic to a ERPC endpoint. And we can have different ways to implement those, uh, those routes. You have uh, what they call the uh, domain specific languages or DSLs that allows you to implement this kind of flows or routes using, uh, for example, the Java DSL. It's very simple. It's a Java code that you can uh, define. Or if you don't want to go that way, you can use like the XML DSL. Or now more recently, we can even support things like the uh, YAML DSL, where you can define your uh, your flows using um, the, the YAML language. Going a little bit uh, in depth on the camera architecture, and please don't be scared about this, 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 uh, this slide. It's like, you know, Looking at C3PO without the uh, the uh, the shell, there are different companies: the context, the routes, the filters, and and the processors. But the important thing here is really the the, the lower part where you have all the components, and these components are the ones that will allow us to plug into you know all these systems: Slack, Telegram, uh, either as a sync as a source. And then the rest of the uh, of of the engineering uh, on on the Camel uh, framework then do the processing and, 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 and the communication. However, we won't be really going that deep. It is for like people that is de deploying their uh, their connectors and or creating these integrations. So most of the times are, you know, the uh, the, the, the camel team, but you can also do that, the exact same thing. So if you feel brave enough and you think uh, that will um, benefit the community, you can go in depth and then start working with, uh, with, with internals. But for avoiding that, going too deep into the into the details, what the Camel team did is to create these sub projects that specialize the uh, Camel framework into more reusable components. So uh, today we will be covering two of, of those components. So there there are more than six uh, projects, but but the ones that we are really uh, targeting with this uh, integration with Camel are two uh, pro sub projects. The first one is the Camel Kafka Connector project, and the other one is the Camel K and the Camel X1 that allows us to have two different visions of how to connect to Kafka using Apache Camel and get the, the most of, of, of this uh, framework um, for, for doing your integration. So what Kafka Connector and Camel K did, it's basically take the content of uh, uh, and, and all the frameworks and all the toolings and all the components and then optimize them to be easier to use uh, without uh, any really Java coding experience and, and being able to add these layers on top of the uh, of the camera framework and being able to um, to then tune it uh, to really make it smooth to work with uh, with Apache Kafka. So let's get started with the first one. So the the camel uh, Kafka connector uh, sub project. So this uh, sub project was uh, mainly focused on how to run uh, using the uh, same Kafka Connect APIs on the way that we most of the times address uh, connectivity to Kafka within the uh, VMs and, 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 and bare metal type of deployments, where you can get all the benefits of running a Kafka Connect cluster and then uh, delegate all the life cycle of your connector to the Kafka Connect cluster. So for this, uh, the uh, Camel Kafka Connect um, project create this pool of uh, Kafka connectors that are built on top of the Apache Camel um, uh, framework and basically tries to reuse in a very simple way uh, those Camel components as Kafka sync and Kafka sources to be deployed on top of, uh, of Kafka Connect. So basically, they add this tiny layer to make it 
uh, easy to plug in and deploy and being able to manage by, by a Kafka Connect cluster. So there's a list of all the connectors, all the three uh, 4D type of, uh, of connectors available if you want to go um, later. And at the end, I will share uh, some of these uh, links with you. And it's a, it's a project from the Apache Camel uh, project. So this uh, looks um, very, uh, very simple. If you can see, perhaps it's a little bit tiny on, on, this, on, the, on the slides, but it's, um, it's reusing the exact same type of um, configuration that uh, usually you find in the Kafka Connect uh, um, ecosystem. So in in this way, you need to define the name of your of your um, of your connector. Then you need to obviously have already download those connectors. So you need to download the uh, jar file. You uh, deploy that in your uh, Kafka Connect cluster, and then start um, configuring uh, this. So you can either deploy as a standalone uh, configuration using this kind of, of approach, or you can uh, reuse the um, uh, REST API when you're deploying on a distributed uh, mode for the uh, Kafka Connect cluster. So then you can uh, define your serializer and, and your key and value uh, converters, sorry, not serializer, converters, to uh, to handle the uh, the different type of, uh, of uh, serialization for, for your data. And then you can configure all the specifics of the uh, Camel component. So you can do um, the uh, topics that you're going to be reading from or writing to, and then you can configure specifics of each one of the components. Like, for example, for, uh, for Amazon S3, you need to uh, configure the access key, the secret key, what's the region that you're going to be using, and, and the same for other Amazon services. And for timer or for other components, you will need to check the documentation, what are different options that you are able to configure. So the good thing about this is that as you can see here, with just defining the configuration, we can start using all these kind of components with no code and just a simple configuration. And this is very useful when you just need to get on ramp, reuse very well tested um, connectors within your new uh, Kafka ecosystem. And, and this works very well because it really uh, leverages the uh, benefits of the Kafka Connect uh, cluster and, and, and APIs. So if you are already running your Kafka Connect cluster, then this is going to be uh, really, uh, really easy. However, when we are moving into a more cloud native or Kubernetes native type of deployments, um, having the, uh, the, uh, the Kafka Connect um, cluster as well as, uh, as the uh, Kubernetes API makes it a little bit redundant. Like you, you have two abstractions for deploying connectors. So, what the Camel uh, team uh, figured out was that it was easier to remove the Kafka Connect layer and then delegate the management of the uh, uh, connectors to obviously Kubernetes and to the uh, Camel uh, K operator. So that's why we are going to be talking about a Camel K and now the more recently added features called Camelets. So let's uh, get a little bit on how these Camel K and Camelets are, are, are making a Camel cool for Kafka. So a little bit of Camel K, as we mentioned, Camel, uh, Camel has, is the umbrella uh, project that has different sub projects handling different specific things. Uh, so the core is obviously focusing on the framework by itself. We talk about uh, the Camel uh, Kafka connectors that focus on how to make these connectors to work with um, with uh, Kafka Connect and Camel K, it's uh, the platform that specializes on running uh, Camel integrations on OpenShift and, and Kubernetes in, in general. So basically, it's taking this declarative approach that Kubernetes offers us to be able to define these components, these connectors, these integrations, these transformations as as custom resources. So it's obviously backed by the uh, Camel K operator, and even though the, the, the main use case was first targeting um, serverless workloads, uh, serverless integrations with, with, with Knative and, 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 and OpenShift serverless, uh, we, uh, we, we realized that there's also uh, other kind of approaches, like for example, now doing, uh, doing Kafka to simplify 
the, uh, the, uh, the kind of integrations that we want. So it's also part of the community. It's also a, a sub project and it started around three years ago. So it, it's now, uh, on, on the, the latest version. It's so, uh, 1.4. So it's, uh, already, uh, uh, maturing. And the idea is that CamelK uses the operator pattern to be able to manage integrations. And the interesting thing about CamelK is that it has, it has different, different capabilities, like from taking, um, your integrations, uh, uh defined as, as, as custom resource to be able to support the creation of functions using, uh, the CamelK, uh, routes and, and so on. It's, it's very versatile. That's why we mostly have been focusing on the concept of camelets. So the idea of, of the camelets, or uh, basically it's the contraction of camel route snippets, camelets, or camelets as, as somebody uh, called them, is that now you can take a camel K to be able to handle a pre-configure and pre-build um, connectors as well as transformations. The exact same way as Kafka Connect had, was being in charge of handling the connectors, the life cycle, exposing a REST API to be able to start them, stop them, and, and configure them. CamelK takes the same approach with the camelets to have the exact same responsibilities of how to start a connector, how to create a connector, how to deploy those connectors, where to get them from, and being able to deploy those as source and sinks uh, within, uh, within the, um, the OpenShift cluster. The interesting thing here is that now, obviously, you can either go all the way into the uh, Camel uh, core and create your own deployments and just um, uh, let Camel K uh, run them, or you can reuse some already created integration connectors available as Camelets and then tell Camel K to be able to deploy those uh, those connectors into um, into your uh, OpenShift environment, and uh, obviously the, the the interesting thing here is that those uh, those connectors are then being managed by uh, by the uh, by the OpenShift and the, and the CamelK operators, and they they can you know be restarted. You can check uh, what is the status, and you can also be able to query the Kubernetes API to get access to other Kubernetes, uh, other, um, sorry, uh, custom resources available uh, in that exact same cluster. So as we were gonna be seeing in, in, in the demo, if we have uh, a little bit of time, you are able to reference then other components that are available in your cluster. So for example, um, we're gonna be seeing that if you are running um, Kafka on Kubernetes uh, using StreamC, for example, uh, StreamC also uses this declarative approach to define your uh, Kafka resources. So you can define your Kafka cluster as custom resource and your Kafka topics as, as custom resources. So the benefit of having, uh, for example, the definition of a Kafka topic as, as a custom resource definition is that then Camel K can reference that, that resource and being able to link all the information attached to that resource, read the status, the specification of that resource, and then reuse it within the context of the uh, of the uh, component or the connector to then use that information to deploy and to configure uh, these, um, these integrations and these, uh, and these routes. So it's very, very interesting. And for that, as I was mentioning, the important thing about the camelets is that now we have a camelet catalog that uh, allows us to have all these components or connectors available. As you can see, we have uh, some of the components that we were mentioning from, from the Camel Kafka connector and also available as Camelet, uh, as Camelets in, in the Camelet catalog where you can get all these connectors and then just reuse them within your cluster to be able to install them and then being able to start using those. So the Apache, uh, uh, um, uh, Camel, uh, site in, 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 uh, in, in the, uh, in the web has this, uh, catalog where you can sort and, and, and search for the different connectors. You have um, connectors, you also have some transformations, and we will be adding as part of the project more and more connectors and more and more transformations so you're able to reuse most of them. So for example, when you are using Kafka Connect, you have 
not only the connectors, but also you are able to leverage some of the transformations. Like, for example, if I want to, you know, um, add a field or extract some some value from the from the uh, from the payload, or being able to um, change the uh, the key of of my record, uh, my Kafka record, or or so on. Some those are some of the things that you can do as part of the single message transformations that I were that I was mentioning um, at the beginning. So those are the kind of things that you can also find in the Camel, uh, Camelet catalog. Those uh, transformations are also available available there. And then, so how do uh, how do Camelets look like? So most of the times um, you will see um, you will what you will be really uh, working with is the Camelet bindings. Uh, so as as I mentioned, you can create your own Camelets if you want to code and to work and to work on with with a workflow. But most of the times you will be reusing already Camelets that have been created um, as part of the catalog or created by your integration team, for example. Uh, if you're uh, part of the, uh, of, the Kafka, uh, of the Kafka user, you will be most of the times using the Camelet binding that allows you to then take a Camelet and configure it to deploy uh, your, uh, your connector and, or your integration. So in this case, in, in this Camelet uh, binding example, what we are taking is the uh, Camelet timer source that is uh, referenced as part of the source. And then, as uh, I was mentioning uh, in, in, uh, before, you can then use a reference to an already existing OpenShift resource, like in this case, for example, an in-memory channel from uh, Knative for your serverless integrations, and then the name of the channel. So this, with this information, you just need to tell that you are gonna be taking from the timer, and then you will be delivering um, your event or your record into that specific uh, channel. There, you can also replace that uh, not just with uh, Kennedy channels, but also you can use, for for example, Kafka topics, or you can use other Camelets as the destination for your uh, for your um, for your binding. So you can then start to build your own data pipelines using this type of Camelet bindings, reusing some of the Camelets already available to create more complex flows. In this case, it's very simple. We are just having a timer that is producing those events, but you can then have something more complex like, and more um, more focus on on the uh, on, on more complex integrations. So that's that's what I wanted to show you now. So let's uh, let's see a, a demo and some more information about this. So I was mentioning, uh, this is how a Camelot binding looks like. So I'm using a VS Code just to show you the uh, YAML file. So you can uh, define as, as um, something that it's uh, declarative using YAML, the information about the Camel binding, the name of the, uh, of the Camel binding, the source. So it's also a reference to a Camelot that has already been uh, deployed on my, um, on my cluster with this name, in this case, time source, and uh, the properties for this is gonna be just uh, hello world. And for the uh, sync, so the source and sync is taking the exact same approach as, uh, as, as, as Kafka users know, it's gonna be a Kafka topic that it's, uh, that it's uh, called um, camel. And if you can see, I'm using stream C in my cluster to define this specific uh, resource. Or you can just, um, Define uh, directly the, uh, the 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 destination, but most of the times you're already running and leveraging all the benefits of OpenShift. I, I will recommend to uh, to have this the exact same um, the exact same approach. Now, um, as I was mentioning, so we do have camelets. So this is a a camelet example for example for a transformation, and this is. Uh, the components that are part of the uh, Camelot catalog. So you, if you want, you can uh, um, create and configure and, and develop your own uh, Camelots. You just need to follow the uh, the Camelot um, uh, development conventions where you need to uh, define what is the specification. So you need to check what is the title, the description, what are the required fields that you need to configure to this um, to this integration to work? So most of the times you don't want to you know hard code 
information there. So you most of the times receive those as uh, as part of the uh, arguments of the call to your uh, to your camelet, and then some dependencies, and then you can define your flow. In in in, the, in this case, we're uh, using a um, the uh, YAML DSL for this flow, where we are uh, taking um, the source that it's coming into this uh, in, into this camelet, and then do simple transformations depending on, on on the configuration, setting the properties, and then doing some um, um, object processing to um, change the uh, the in this case for for the hoist field for the information that is part of the of of the payload. So and like this, there are different uh, type of camelets. Um, another example for uh, it's the uh, Telegram thing. So if you want to send Kafka messages into a camelet, then you are able to check the description of, of this uh, of this one, the uh, different properties that you require, like the authorization token from uh, from Telegram, the chat ID where you want to uh, to deliver those messages, and then the different the different flows. And here we're using this, um, this YAML approach because it makes it very easy. So if you can, if you can see, you can just just, just reusing the the DSL. No need to code anything. It's mostly uh, configuration and, and declarative approach. But as you can see, this is a little bit more complex. So that's the benefit that you can get with the Camel um, the, uh, with the Camel framework is that you can go from something very easy to something really really complex if you really need to or you need to implement your own specific uh, processors, for example, to do uh, something very, very specific, but most of the time you will find uh, most of them already uh, already available. So then how you how you look at, at those when you are binding them, for example, the uh, the Telegram one, how you can use it is, yeah, we already see the uh, the Camelot and now we are using the Camelot binding, then we are referencing, referencing for, for example, the Kafka topic that we are going to be taking those um, those uh, messages, and then this uh, this example shows how to build these pipelines that I was mentioning uh, in the past, right? So you can have different uh, different uh, steps or different um, um, phases of your data pipeline. The first one is just extract some information. Then you can uh, apply the hoist field action. And then you can do some uh, patterns, like for example, calling an API that is doing the enrichment, until you get to the end, and then you uh, have your your sync or your final target system or destination, where you can then send the uh, send the information at uh, at the end. So this is uh, this is how uh, the uh, the different um, uh, objects can can be uh, can be uh, related. And then how you uh, deal with them is if we go to the terminal, if we hit get here, we are uh, also in the same in the same process. So what we recommend to use it's the uh, Camel CLI, the Camel uh, Common Line Tooling, helps you to um, deal and, and easily manage your uh, your Camel resources. So in this case, um, we we only have some uh, some Camel bindings already. If this, um, yeah, uh, there's a one timer that is already uh, um, working, but also we can add more camelets so we can see. As you as as you are seeing, um, I'm using um, Casey. It's uh, the cube cuddle uh, command um, for uh, querying the uh, the OpenShift um, API. So we are able to get all these uh, custom resources as part of the OpenShift uh, ecosystem. So. Casey, get uh, camelets. So you see that there's um, no, no camelets here, uh, but we can then apply, and then camelets, and this will install all the different camelets. So uh, in this case, I have these camelets here local in my machine, but you can also uh, use the ones that are already available in the site. So if you are going to the uh, to the camelet um, camelet side, you will be able to find them. So, if you can see here, we have the camelet catalog that I was showing you in the slides, and there are here all the different uh, connectors that are available. And the one that I that I will be using here is the uh, timer source, 
and so you can uh, see here what is the information about the configuration. So you need the message. That's the uh, the uh, the um, the uh, the field that you the property that you need to uh, to boot, and then there's other information like the context type, the period, and and so on. But these are optionals. The only one mandatory is, is the message. And there's some examples like the one that I shared with you. Um, if you want to uh, avoid to copying them manually, you can just reference them uh, directly from the uh, from the uh, from the site. So you can go to the GitHub repo where you can see the uh, the different camelets and the timer source camelet, for example. It's uh, it's here. And if you want to install this one, you can just go to the raw file. And just um, apply this um, this one into the um, into your server, so you're able to um, install those um, directly. So what uh, the uh, the service is doing when I'm running the uh, this uh, this component is, if you can see now my OpenShift cluster, sorry, is that I have a, a project uh, called Kafka. So in this uh, Kafka project, I just uh, have the StreamC operator installed that it's managing my uh, my uh, my Kafka resources. Let's uh, wait for this to uh, load. So in the install operators, I do have the uh, Infi Streams operator that is the uh, the Red Hat version of the StreamC operator and also the Camel K operator. With the version now uh, 1.4, and if I was mentioning, you can also use uh, serverless or Knative if you want to get all the extensions for the um, for the uh, um, scale to zero and and the serverless um, components. And as I was mentioning, this project I do have a Kafka cluster called Demo, and remember because we are using um, the uh, operator, we are defining everything as a custom resource. So this is a, a simple uh, Kafka cluster that has um, uh, the, the Kafka brokers, uh, three, uh, three of them, and three subkeepers, and it's exposing just internal um, internal uh, endpoints and a route uh, for accessing from, from the outside. And also, as I was mentioning, we also can define the uh, other resources like um, Kafka Bridge, or in my case, it was looking for the um, Kafka topic. Yeah, Kafka topic, so the way here. So in my case, as I was mentioning, we need to create the uh, camel Kafka topic. And because we create that as a custom resource, then we are able to reuse them in the, uh, in the example that I was, that I was showing. So this, when we create this, what we see is that we have the pods running on my three uh, uh, Kafka brokers, my three zookeepers, and the operator is already available here. And then I have this um, this pod already running with information on the uh, on 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 the integration. And this is uh, created because the uh, the um, the integration is already running, but I can delete what that one as I was mentioning. So KC um, delete, camelet binding, timer to Kafka, this will uh, delete the um, that integration or that pod that it's running the actual integration within the timer and my Kafka cluster and it removes that pod. If I do um, apply again the, um, the timer to Kafka, the YAML file, the uh, Camel K operator takes that definition that was created now as a custom resource and then deploys my uh, pod and starts then to run within um, the connection. So if you notice, I didn't have to configure my, uh, my Kafka uh, bootstrap server. I just add the reference to the, um, to the Kafka topic that it's obviously linked to a Kafka cluster where it was being created using the uh, StreamC operator. In the case of the Camel K, I just make the reference to the Kafka topic, and then it automatically wired all the information to connect to my uh, my Kafka cluster. So that's 
one of the interesting things uh, about uh, using Camelets and Camel K, you don't need to configure everything, so it's able to easily uh, connect and plug into this into this cluster. So obviously, it creates the um, the configuration, and then it starts to run my integration, my my Camelet, and it starts to send events to the Kafka cluster. So if everything goes correctly, we should be able to see the uh, integration running here. So let's check if this is uh, running. So in my case, I'm just going to run the console consumer uh, shell script from Kafka uh, that it's uh, available within my one of my Kafka um, cluster brokers. And let's check if we are able to get some information here from the uh, from the topic. If everything works, then we should be able to see. Yep, our hello world message being uh, received every one second as we configure in our uh, our information and um, our uh, integration. If I want to update this message, it's um, very straightforward. I just go to my um, timer to Kafka configuration. So in this, instead of uh, saying hello world, we will gonna be putting hello open shift. Save that one. And then let's um, apply this again. Okay. This uh, should be um, updating. Um, our pod, yeah, we see that now the pod, the old pod, it's been terminated, and then the new pod with the new configuration, it's coming up. And yeah, here we have hello OpenShift. Very easy, very straightforward. We can get from uh, from something simple or complicated, depending on what it's your integration, and then we are defining here uh, directly. So the good thing about this is that you don't need Kafka Connect anymore. So you can rely on all the benefits of the distributed uh, Kubernetes API to handle the lifecycle of your pods, restarting, scaling, and, and so on. So it's, it's, it's very interesting to have this. Okay, let's uh, get back to the slides after we saw a little bit of this demo, and let's do a close up for, for this. So I was mentioning uh, we have um, these uh, camel connectors for Kafka. Um, they're part of the, uh, they're sub projects of the, uh, of the Camel umbrella project. It allows you to combine the power of all these big, uh, projects like Kafka and Camel to work together and then broaden the ecosystem and simplify the way to build your data pipelines using Kafka. So you can experience the maturity of the Camel project, uh, with all these enterprise integration patterns, with all these connectors. And you can also, get all the benefits of the simplicity from Kafka Connect if you're deploying in a VM, or leverage all the different um, benefits from the operator pattern using uh, your OpenShift cluster or your Kubernetes cluster. So in this way, if you're a Kafka user, then you can get now all these big set of components and transformations available up to you. You are able to then create your own without having to code at all, no Java as, as you can See, in, in the examples, you can just define your flows, how your information is going to be handled, how your transformations are going to be managed, take decisions, choice, implement your patterns without coding and getting your custom uh, integrations. And for the existing Camel users, you can easily reuse all your skills that you have as a Camel developer or as a Camel user, and then get into the Kafka world very easily, uh, reusing this information without having to relearn uh, APIs or, or the way to connect uh, using the, uh, the, the, the Kafka uh, components. So that's a, a very easy way to uh, to tune your your skills. So there's um, some uh, useful links if you want to uh, to check more about this. Uh, some of the ones that, that I showed you, uh, you can go to the GitHub repo for the Camel Kafka connectors. You can also go to Camel K sub project so you can read the documentation. You can uh, check um, the developer guide for creating Camelets. Uh, you can also please join the, the, the Camel Sleep Chat so you're able to uh, join the community, uh, share with, with us what's, uh, what you think about Camel K. 
And obviously, you can also uh, follow them on Twitter. Um, you can also uh, start the GitHub repos. I encourage you to do that so you're able to uh, participate and, and give us your, your feedback. And I think that's uh, that's all on my on my side. I don't know if there's any questions, comments, something so, that you yeah, so want to go over. I would uh, thank you so much for go walking through all of this. And, and I'm really intrigued, actually, um, personally, by the Camelettes um, the, and the catalog. If you could go back um, and show us what's in there for besides the one that you demoed, I'd be really interested in um, getting your perspective on what's in there, what's coming there, and if someone wanted to create a custom Camelot, um, how would they go about doing that? Or is there in the documentation maybe there's a little bit around that if you want to create your own? Because I, I can imagine people wanting to write their own enterprise specific Camelot that's behind their firewall or whatever. And that seems to be yeah. one of the, the cool bits of this whole process. Right. Yeah. So um, as I was mentioning, you can go. So if you navigate directly to the uh, to the camel site. I oh. see. Yeah. There we go. Uh. Somehow it's. Uh, yeah. Wait a second. It just froze, as uh. as you would expect for this <laughs> this kind uh, of you thing. You go through so, the whole demo and nothing breaks, and then you try yeah, to do exactly. the documentation. And it hoses up. Oh well. Um, yeah. There yeah. Uh, and let me check if I can open another. I think. Uh, yeah, it just broke. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. In the documentation, there's um, there's uh, a link to the uh, developer guide, so you can um, check the information on how to develop your own um, your own components. And as I was mentioning at the beginning, you can either reuse the ones that are in the uh, in the community, mm -hmm. or if you develop locally, as I I, I did show you when, with the ones that I had in my in my own local file system that I add them to my cluster, those uh, those are the ways to to go. So you can have your own repo where you can have them private, or you can um, oh here's it, the, or, or you can uh, go over them. So if you go to the Camel catalog. Um, you have uh, this list on the left side. You can see the we have a lot of for AWS services, Azure services. So those are the ones that the community has sort of been ready created for you, and they're available like for free. You can just go to the uh, to the repo and then just uh, reuse them. Uh, if you want to uh, to write your own, then there's the Camelot Developer Guide. This is the information on, on the basics. So what is source, what is the sync, um, what is the single YAML file that you need to work on, creating a simple Camelot. So you can go over this guide and it helps you to define how to create and what are the different components that you need to create for uh, uh, for having your own Camelot. And now that you have the final XML file, a uh, YAML file, sorry, you can then um, either install that in your cluster or if you want, and please do that if, if it's possible, Share with the uh, with the Camel community, uh, so we are able to publish them into the uh, Camel catalog. No, but it's no. uh, basically most of the information is right here. Yeah, awesome. So I'm looking forward to an explosion of Camelots in the community. So hopefully, um, people will find this um, this topic interesting and figure out different aspects of um, leveraging the Camelots and share them with the community. And come to the community Slack. Um, if you're looking for that, um, a, connect, a way to connect. Do you have community meetings, Hugo, um, for the Camel K community? Uh, there are. Uh, I don't have the, uh, the, the schedule um, uh, on hand, but um, certainly we, we can share with that uh, with, with, with your um, uh, audience later. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll, we'll definitely dig up that um, because I think this, you know, the, the Slack channel, um, the, the, the Apache Camel one is a pr probably a really good place to go to to ask questions and stuff like that and find it out. But also, yeah, if you're interested in joining the community, this would be a um, a great time and a great way to get started. I think and easy. Yeah, easy I to mean, join. you can you can join to the uh, to the uh, to the Camel GitHub if you have issues and and so on. You can follow discussions there. But I think most of the uh, activity really happens in the Clip channel. And, and that's where you will find certainly everyone, and that's where the uh, the agendas and and, and, the, and the meetings are, are being published. Uh, it's okay. a very vibrant community, so it's uh, I, I do recommend you to to reach them 
over there and, and you will get certainly uh, pointers on, on, on how to uh, work with them. Awesome. I'm going to have to check out Zuloop um, and see if I can find that as an alternative to, to Slack. I think I'm, I'm getting burnt out on Slack because of the Kubernetes stuff that we're doing. Yeah. And the CNCF is that, but um, there would be, it'd be nice to have some alternatives here. So I'll have to check it out. Yeah. There are a couple, and the community decided to use uh, Leap as part of that. I, I know they are they are doing doing good with with, with that. Uh, and yeah, Slack killed by Slack channels. It's some of the more recent things that oh, yeah. I no, see developers with. Yeah, it's the you know the Slack channels and CNCF and for Kubernetes and for OpenShift Commons are pretty active, and you know we monitor them as well. But it's also, you know, I'm, I'm always looking for a good new one. Um, so that has better archiving and, of threads and things, and I, I suspect um, anything's got to be better than Slack for archiving yeah. um, conversations. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so thank you very much, Hugo, for coming. Um, and I'm going to get Hugo to share his slide deck with me, and I'm going to post this up in um, YouTube um, later today um, with a link to the slides. Um, I am loving that you kicked off the Monday with so many Star Wars references. It just makes my week. And um, the only thing you missed was a Baby Yoda reference. So um, I don't know, maybe that's what the Camelots are. are. Lots of Baby baby Yodas out there. So um, Yeah, they're just a ball bean. It's the new canon. So let's see how, how it gets. I think it's, yeah. uh, it's a very interesting thing. Let's, let's, uh, let's leave it uh, develop. There you go. All right. Well, Hugo, thank you very much again. Um, we'll put this all together in a blog post on openshift.com um, or on redhatdevelopers.com very shortly um, and get it out there and circulate it. And you can always reach Hugo on Twitter um, and hanging around in that Zulu channel, I'm sure. So um, thank you again. And thanks to our producer, Chris Short, for um, hanging in there with us today and making this happen. So take care, all. Thank you, everyone.